In this presentation, we're going to look at meiosis. In revision, meiosis occurs in, in the sex cells and, and results in the production of gametes, sperm and egg in animals, and pollen and the eggs inside the ovules in plants. It results in halving the chromosome number and it introduces variation. And this variation is really, really important in uh, survival of organisms. What we're looking at now is, uh, is chromosomes. They don't have that characteristic X shape that you might remember, but these are homologous chromosomes. What that means is that they're the same uh, chromosome, they have the same genes in the same location. And we get homologous chromosomes, one from each parent. So we have a paternal from the father and a maternal chromosome from the mother. So that same gene in the same location, or loci, is uh, being illustrated there. And those genes, although being the same, there can be different variations of it. And that's what we term an allele. So we can see capital A and little a representing two alleles, a dominant recessive allele. So alleles, variations of the same gene. Of course, it doesn't have to be uh, different alleles. They could be both the same. Okay, the first part of uh, meiosis is interphase, and this is actually in between. This is the longest segment in between. And then the chromosome is stretched out. It's thread-like. It doesn't take on the characteristic chromosome shape. In this stage, the chromosome rep uh, the chromosome or the DNA replicates from uh, two times the number of chromosomes to four times the number of chromosomes. Next phase is early prophase. We're going to break prophase up into uh, two segments because a, a lot's occurring in prophase. So we have our, our cell membrane being drawn in, and now we have the nuclear membrane being drawn in. Between the nuclear membrane and the cell membrane, we have the cytoplasm. We can see our homologous chromosomes being drawn. So at this stage, although they've been duplicated, we're just seeing them as a single. They're, they're not uh, they're not spl splitting apart there. And we are looking at two particular chromosomes. So this was two n, two times two is uh, four. So the chromosomes condense and shorten in early prophase, and homo homologous pairs are formed. We can also see in early prophase, it's the beginning when the nuclear membrane begins to break down. So it hasn't as yet in this drawing, but it, it is about to break down. So late prophase. Again, we'll see the, the drawing of the cell membrane. And we can see straight away that the nuclear membrane has been broken down. And our chromosomes being drawn have the characteristic X shape. So we have our two parts of the chromosome joined together in the middle by a centromere. So our two lots of chromosomes have been drawn. What we can also see in the large chromosome is that they're, they're touching each other, they're crossing over. So crossing over exchanges genetic material between the paternal and the maternal uh, chromosomes. So replicated chromosomes split into chromatids. So we have sister chromatids making up those individual chromosomes, and variation is in, involved in crossing over. So chiasma is where crossing over occurs. This is the location where crossing over actually occurs. In metaphase one, we're breaking this up because there are two uh, divisions in meiosis, and this is the first division in metaphase. What we see is our chromosomes have been drawn in, and we can see that uh, the, the aftermath of crossing over, where that genetic material has been exchanged on the chromatids of the, the opposite chromosomes. What we can also see is that the chromosomes are lining up, and they line up in the centre of the cell, or what we call the equator. This is where segregation also starts to occur. So we can see that the two large chromosomes, say chromosome 1 or the two smaller chromosomes, chromosome 2, are going to be pulled apart from each other. We can also see the independent assortment. So the colours are separating from each other. The greens are not going in the same direction. The purples are not going in the same direction. This is, of course, completely random. We can see the centromere being drawn in. That's the centromere there. 
and what it says is that spindle fibers from the central housing plant cell, in animal cells, not from plant cells, are responsible for uh, drawing the, the, the chromosomes apart from each other. In anaphase 1, we can already see that the chromosomes have been brought further apart. So it is the, in animal cells, which this is, it would be the, the centrioles, which are cell organelles, which uh, produce the uh, spindle fibres, which attach to the centromeres, that joins the, the uh, chromosomes together, and pulls them away from each other. So homologous pairs are brought away from each other. In telophase 1, we can see that two nuclear membranes are being drawn. So we and what we can see in these two nuclear membranes is that one of each of the chromosomes is being drawn in. We can still see that there are variations as, uh, as has been carried through because those chromosomes are of uh, different origins, one from the paternal and one from the maternal, and they've been split into the different uh, nuclear membranes. Cytokinesis may not always occur in all cases, but we do see two daughter cells being produced and nuclear membranes around those daughter cells to show that uh, there has been uh, division occurring. What we also see is the chromosome number has decreased from uh, four times the number to two times the number. After telophase one, we move back into metaphase. This is the second division. In the second division, we can see that we have our chromosomes in our two nuclear uh, membranes. And again, what we can see is that they're starting to al align. So as it draws in the second chromosome, they're starting to align. And they're going to align from uh, top to bottom in this case, because that's the way the cell division is going to occur. So recapping that, the chromosomes align at the equator again, just as they did earlier on in part of um, the first my meiotic division. The spindle fibres attached to the chromosomes. The spindle fibres come from the centrioles attached to the chromosomes, and will uh, later, in the next phase, draw them apart. So in a phase two, nuclear membrane being drawn. We can see our first first cell. And what we can see is that in this case that they've been starting to draw onto the poles. So our, our chromosome has been split again and we're splitting it apart into what we call chromatids. So the sister chromatids have been drawn apart from each other. And that's going to repeat that in the second nuclear membrane. Note again that the cytoplasm hasn't been split, so cytokinesis has not occurred at this point. So refreshing that, the sister chromatids separate and move to opposite poles. And I'm just going to draw in right now that where the sister chromatids are, just to highlight that for you, and we're going to draw it to the, the two purple ones. So they're sister chromatids, they once made up the chromosome before separation. Now, last phase, we're going to draw telophase and cytokinesis together. So this telophase is the division of the, the nuclear membranes, and cytokinesis is the division of the cytoplasm. So that word cytokinesis, so cyto is in the name, so we know it's the division of the cytoplasm. So in the first one there, we can see that there is just the singular uh, what was a chromatid? We now, convention says that now once they're in their own cell, they are now called chromosomes. However, there's just one of each of the chromosomes. There's no more homologous pairs. And this is the important part, that the original cell number had 2n, or diploid number. We're now achieving 
a haploid number or just n chromosomes. So there is one of the chromosome 1, which was the larger one, and one of chromosome 2, which was the smaller one in each of the cell. We can also see that there is segregation has occurred. None of the cells have the same chromosome in them, and some of them uh, have independent assortment. There are different colours in each. So we have reduction division, and we're going from a 2n to n, which is a haploid number. And as I pointed out, the daughter cells are not identical. So haploid basically means a single set of chromosomes. So we can see the big one and the small one there. So in summary, there is two meiotic divisions. The first meiotic division is what we call the reduction division, where we go from 4n after duplication in interphase, we go from 4n to 2n. Genetic variation introduced. I spelt variation wrong. So crossing over of genetic material between homologous chromosomes. Segregation of homologous chromosomes is where the, the, the same chromosome moves to different cells. And independent assortment, the maternal and paternal chromosomes don't always go in the same direction. In fact, we can look at it as being to the power of 23 different combinations in humans. There are 23 pairs of chromosomes and they can form 2 to the power of 23 combinations. In the second meiotic division, uh, which is the mitotic division, it's, it's named that because uh, it's very similar to mitosis. And the daughter cells uh, further divide into four gametes and each cell contains haploid number of chromosomes. And point out the diploid number can only be achieved again through the possibility of fertilization. It's not going to happen in all cases, but through the possibility of fertilization, the diploid number can be achieved through the moving together of egg and sperm or pollen and uh, egg within the ovule of plants. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation on meiosis uh, and look forward to discussing this in class with you.